Hello friends, Pastor Lauren Mellum here. Welcome to Community Connection and to our Sharon Faith community continuing to journey through these days of Advent. Today is Monday and we are in the second week of our Advent journey as we continue to dwell in the word and anticipate the coming days that lead us towards the celebration of Christmas. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been thinking about wilderness and Advent largely because the scriptures for yesterday and Sunday had the theme of wilderness in them, wilderness and Advent, wilderness and the coming of God into our lives. What do you think about wilderness? I mean, in the Bible, it's kind of an interesting thing, but we have to land the plane in our own lives in some way. And when I think about wilderness, it is about, uh, feeling the need to control certain situations in order to feel secure, more secure, and then realizing at times, you know, I have with a lot of things in my life, not so much control. Or uh, wanting to really influence a situation and realizing it is a dynamic situation or realizing that circumstances are particularly hard either in the world or personally and realizing that uh, the weight of certain circumstances are so heavy that I need to look to God and even be driven to God by certain situations or, or feelings even inside of myself. So wilderness, it's real. The First Testament of the Bible, the Old Testament and in the New Testament there are significant themes about wilderness, and they often are about really hard places, but also the wilderness is about God showing up. It is a, is a place, it is situations, circumstances where God is really at work. And uh, sometimes hidden, I mean, the hiddenness of God is real, and yet always, the promise that in those situations, God is at work. It is our theology of the cross as Lutherans that God finds us. You know, Barbara Brown Taylor speaks of wilderness. She's an Episcopalian writer, preacher, teacher, professor. She writes these words about wilderness. Whatever your own wilderness is like, I am betting that it has at least three things in common with all other wildernesses. You did not choose it. It is no place you would ever have gone on your own. You are not in control. You cannot even control the pounding of your own heart. Whether it is noisy or quiet, there is one sound missing, and that is the voice of God. It might not even seem like a wilderness to you if you could hear the voice telling you that everything is going to be all right, that you are not alone, that it is all for a reason, but you cannot hear it. And that silence defines the wilderness. Well, the second week of Advent, even though we have these silences in our lives where we wonder where the voice of God is, we have this preparatory figure, John the Baptist, who cries out in the wilderness. And he speaks in such a way, and most likely with such a fierce passion for what was in his heart, that people resonated with him. They felt there was hope in his words. And I love the gospel for this week in Mark 1, where it talks about the whole Judean countryside, the rural area, and all of Jerusalem, the urban area, come out to the wilderness to John the Baptist to hear his words, to be baptized, and to begin to turn to God in a new way. So Advent is a time to listen for the voice. But before we get to the celebration of the incarnation, Christmas, uh, we have this unsettling kind of thinking about wilderness and just to know that between the first coming of Jesus as the babe of Bethlehem and the promised second coming of Christ, 
There's an in-between space there. It's a place of mission and purpose, and to varying degrees for all of us at any moment, there are dimensions of wilderness where we realize we're not in as much control as we think we are and that we need God. Spiritually, it's the right place to be because we are driven into the arms of a loving God who embraces us with an extravagant mercy that lifts us up. The Isaiah 40 passage that goes along with Mark 1 for this week is uh, beautifully written. And on Wednesday night, it will be the featured passage this coming Wednesday evening for worship. But part of Isaiah 40 just speaks of this wilderness. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God makes a way to us, finds us, and in the midst of it, we are invited to keep listening to prepare the way for God's coming in our lives. Sometimes that has to do with not what we do or the effort we put in, but the stillness and the space we create to hear and to see with new energy and to trust together that indeed God comes and is with us always. I'm going to share with you a devotional for this week from the Loyola Press as a way just to continue to open up Advent journey. It is the same for all of us, the Advent journey, and yet for each of us, it is personal in different ways. And yet together, we continue to pray for come Lord Jesus, and we can think about wilderness and Advent. And so here's some thoughts about John the Baptist. Something big was about to happen. But then John the Baptist had been expecting something unusual. He had heard stories about the time before he was born, how he had come onto the scene long after his parents thought children would be part of their lives. Both his mother, Elizabeth, and his father, Zechariah, a priest, had received messengers Though his father did not at first believe what was happening, who made a surprising promises that John would take after the prophet Elijah. John grew and became strong in spirit, and in time he embraced his calling to be a prophet with a passion, and he headed out into the wilderness. He even looked the part, with camel's hair clothes, a leather belt, a diet of locusts and wild honey. He was a spitting image of Elijah, and he had a prophet's message, a call which called people back, and he would say, repent. Let your heart be changed. Turn your life around, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Then came the moment John's whole life had been heading towards, he realized one was coming after me who was more powerful than I. He even started denying he was a prophet he acted so much like. He said, I'm not Elijah, and I'm not the Messiah. The real Messiah was on his way. It's Advent. Jesus is near. And with the rest of the people of God, you and I are out in the wilderness waiting for him to appear. These days of Advent, we trust together in a God who comes down and is in, with, and under all of life. And we pray for those moments of revelation when the veil from our eyes and even from our hearing is pulled back and we can see the presence of God and hear the voice of God. 
the wilderness is sometimes a place where we just cannot get a sense of the presence of God. It eludes us. And yet, Scripture is clear in its promise that the place that God finds his people is in the wilderness. And for us, it's a place that we pray and struggle and yearn together for hope. Blessings on your continued Advent journey as we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. These days of December are going to go so quickly. And yet, we move intentionally as the people of God, trusting in the hope that God gives us in Jesus. Please pray with me. God, we thank you for these holy days that lead us to the celebration of Christmas. We pray for a world that cries out in deep need. And we ask that in your coming, you would give hope. We pray for essential workers, healthcare workers, physicians, and nurses, and all who struggle with COVID. And we pray for any other circumstances that feel out of our control. And as we pray for your presence to come, we claim the promise that you are already here. And we ask that you would give us ears to hear your voice and eyes to see your presence and that we would join together in loving our neighbor. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Blessings to you as you journey in this week. May you have a sense of hope this week. Amen.